Hello. It's good to have you tonight joining 7 at 7. Welcome. So glad you could come on here. And if you're not coming at this moment, we know you can join us at other times in the evening or in the next few days. And don't forget, if this is encouraging to you tonight, and it has been all week, every night we have 7 at 7, if this is encouraging, please share it because if you're getting something out of it, maybe somebody else you know will get something out of it too and lift their spirits and lift their hearts or just have a real moment of God's presence speaking to them for their situation, all right? So I'm glad you joined us tonight for 7 at 7. And I really love our series this month. I think I said that last week, but it's Don't Stop Believing. Uh, it's such an encouraging and uplifting series, and it's so true uh, from Father God, how much he wants us to believe in him and why he's given us every reason to believe in him. So this week, as I was thinking about the 7 at 7 tonight, I just, it kept coming to me about there's two sides to every coin. There's two sides to a coin. And we know that there is a, I found a quarter. I wanted to find a half dollar and couldn't find it. I have a quarter here with me tonight. The one side, there is a God side. And on the other side of the coin, there's a man side. On the God side, he's true to his promises. And his promises, the Bible says, are yes and amen. And on the man side, we are to don't stop believing his promises. So we have a God side and we have a man side. There's uh, two sides to every coin. And if you'll think about that, it makes it really simple. We have the God side. He's true to his promises. He says they're yes and amen. They're for you and they're for me. And the other side is the man side. Don't stop believing in his promises because it's his will to bring them to pass. And you know, this uh, series this past Sunday was on Don't Stop Believing in Good Times and Bad Times. And I kept hearing Don't Stop Believing in the Rough Times or the Challenging Times because the pattern of God is to keep all his promises. We don't have to stop believing because God has a pattern and he keeps all and every one of his promises. And so I was really drawn to this scripture that Pastor Dale used Sunday out of 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. The confidence of my calling enables me to overcome every difficulty without shame. That's the first part of it. The confidence of my calling. And I love this, Pastor Dale said, we're all called. You are all called. Everybody is called to be a believer, to be an encourager. Everybody is called to be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. All of us are called to testify and to lift people up and to help people. So the confidence of that calling enables us to overcome every difficulty. I love this. Paul says every difficulty without shame. You can be encouraged to know that every difficulty that you go through, God has given you his ability to overcome it and not have any shame as your result. He says, for I am intimate revelation of this God and my faith in him convinces me that he is more than able to keep all that I've placed in his hands safe and secure until the fullness of of his appearing. So Paul says his faith in God convinces him that God is more than able to keep all that he's placed in his hands. Everything that we place in God's hands, he's more than able to keep it and he'll keep it secure until the fullness of his coming. So, you know, we all have been given faith and that faith that God gave us should be enough to convince us that it's God's will that our future and our past we can place in his hands. You can put your past in his hands because no longer is your past to be controlling you, dominating you, shaming you, or condemning you. Because Jesus said that he no longer gives you condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. And then again, we can put in his hands our future because he knows our future. 
future. And he says, the steps of the righteous man, that's you and me that are in Christ Jesus, are ordered of the Lord. He's ordering your steps for your future to turn out for the way that he planned so that you will be successful, so that you will have an overcoming spirit, and so that you will be that life giver to others that Jesus has given you from his life. And then we know that God will overcome our mistakes because his plan is bigger than our failures. God will overcome any mistake or any failure that you have ever made because he's bigger than our failures. And you know, I love it out of 1 Corinthians. It says, the love of God never fails. And he has assured us, he convinces us, and he's shown us his everlasting love that never gives up on us. And then I just wanted to remind you like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego out of Daniel 3, they, these were the Hebrew children, and Nebuchadnezzar the king had ordered them to bow to the king's idols. There was even a song, a theme song, that the king had to be played so many times a day, and whenever that music was played in their land, everyone was to bow to that music, which represented the idol of Nebuchadnezzar. And so I wanted to remind you today that we, every day, have to make a decisive decision not to bow to idols. We still have to do this today. And it's not like we have somebody holding it over our heads, except there is one who holds it over your head because the enemy of your faith, Satan, he wants you to bow to the spirit of fear. He is the father of all lies, and he wants us to bow to the spirit of fear because fear from him is intimidation. It's an intimidator. And fear from him also is uh, like he's a bully. He's going to bully us or bully you to into fear. But remember, God said he's not giving you a spirit of fear but of power, love, and a sound mind. So there's no need to fear God. And there's no need to fear your future or your past because now you're placing that in his hands. And so we want to make that decision not to fear. And we'll have to make it every single day because the intimidator, Satan, he's always bringing us something to fear. So he wants to convince you of one thing, either you're not good enough to receive the outcome of your faith in believing God's promises, or number two, God will not come through on his promise to you. That's what the intimidator with fear is trying to do to us every day. These two things, another type of sides of the coin. Number one, either you're not good enough to receive the outcome of your faith in believing God's promises, or number two, the other side of the coin, God will not come through on his promise to you. But guess what? God's spirit is within you and greater is he that's in you than he's that's in the world. So his spirit is greater and you don't have to bow to fear, false intimidation, which is what the enemy's trying to bring you. You don't have to bow to the, the bully of fear and you don't have to compromise. We don't want to bow to peer pressure from those doubters concerning God's ways and God's purpose and God's plan for our lives. God wants to perform something really good for you right now in your life. His will for you is to prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. And I love this in 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in behalf of those whose hearts are blameless towards him. And so I used to read this scripture and think, well, my heart is not always blameless towards God, so his eyes aren't looking for me because I know that my heart is not always blameless. But this word blameless means to be open before him or to be mature, and the word mature means to believe his word. So the eyes of the Lord are running to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in your behalf because your heart is open towards him and because you believe his word. 
That's what God's doing right now in your behalf. He's looking for you whose heart is open before him. And he wants to perform something good in your life today. And remember he said in Matthew 28, 20, I will be with you even to the end of the age. So God's not giving up on you. God hasn't bypassed you. You are not doing anything in your life that is overwhelming to God. There's nothing that's happened to you that is too big for God to fix. He's the fixer. He's the God of the second and third and fifth chances. And he's here to give you a wonderful life. Just don't stop believing. Bless you. Take this tonight, share it with others, and be encouraged that you're going to have a great rest of the week because God is for you and God is working with you and he's working in your behalf. God bless you.